Well, welcome back to Python scripting for GIS applications. Uh, this is spring semester 2013, and this is a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. This week, we're going to write Python scripts inside the ARC GIS field calculator. So, for example, here's our field calculator, and we could write scripts using uh, VB or using Python. So as a simple example, here's an integer field, and we'll write a simple Python script to calculate something in this integer field. And typically when you're writing Python scripts using the field calculator, you're going to say show codebook. And this is where you're going to store a function that basically returns um, some values using Python scripting. So the first thing I'll do is I'll show you how you would use a Python function to return values, and then we'll come back to this field calculator. Okay, so most of the time it's more efficient to write your Python scripting just in a Python um, file to test drive it first. And then once it works successfully, then you can basically use it in your field calculation in ArcGIS. So what we're going to do is make a function, and that always starts with a DEF statement, and then whatever you want to call your function. So I'll say I'm going to name this function my function. And then it gets input. And the input is typically a variable or some sort of container. So I'll say um, my variable here will be in value. And then colon. And then all the statements inside my function will be indented. So what we'll do is we'll take whatever this input value is and multiply it by 100. So I'll store that in a local variable called result. So result will be equal to in value. times 100. And then we'll simply return result. Okay, so we'll check for any errors. And there were no syntax errors. Okay, so now we'll test this function. We'll run it. And then we can test it by just saying, okay, we'll print and then the name of our function, which I called my function, you could call it anything you want, and then we'll pass a value to that function. So for example, pass the value one, it should basically take that value, multiply it by 100, and then return the result. So that's basically how functions work in Python. So basically it's just, send some value to your function, so one becomes this input variable, and then take that times 100, and then return the result, which in this case was 100. So we could try it one more time, so print my function, and we'll pass a value 3, and it returns uh, 300. So now what we're going to do is the same thing in the ArcGIS field calculator. Okay, so we're back in ArcGIS and we've got our field calculator. So what we'll do is say we want to create a Python um, field calculation. So we click on Python and then show codebook. So this is where we're going to put our function. So I just copy control C and then paste control V. So now we've got our function, and then we simply, in this integer field, that's what we were trying to calculate, we would basically say, okay, we'll take that function and pass to that function some other field value. So here we've got a field object ID, so we'll just double click on that field. And when we're doing Python field calculators, the field names are enclosed in these exclamation points. And you don't even have to know that if you just double click on a field, it will automatically put the exclamation points in there. So what this should do is say, okay, take these values of one, two, and three, pass them to this function, 
and then return the result and that result will be stored in this new field called integer field and then OK. Okay, so then that is what happened. And if you want to, you could always store your field calculation into a little text file. So here we would just say, okay, this successfully worked. We might want this for some other reason. So we would just save that to a little text file. And that save button allows you to save it to a text file. And it will have an extension .cal, which stands for field calculator. Okay. Okay, here are the common uh, numeric operators that are used in Python. And typically you'll use ones like plus, minus, um, multiply, divide, um, or raise to the power. This one is the mod operator, and it returns the remainder after division. And that can be used, for example, if you have contours and you want to grab um, all the contours that end with, for example, um, the value 100. So let's do a little Python script and I'll show you that as an example. Okay, so we will start with defining a function and I'll just call it mod value. You could call it anything you want. And then colon. And then inside that function, um, we're gonna basically create a result and that's going to be equal to our input value and divide it by 100 and return the remainder. So the percentage sign is that mod uh, operator. And then once we have that result, we will return that result. Okay, so that defines our function. So to use it, um, let's say we've got a bunch of contours. So we'll say contours ranging from um, 10 to 500. Oops. In increments of 10. So then what we'll do is, whoops, Alt P and then colon is needed there. So then we'll print out the input that goes to our function and then the function, what it returns. So in this case, our function is mod value and con, yeah, so what it returns. Okay, so basically what it did was, this was our input and then that divided by 100, the remainder would be 100. All the way down to here, once we have the value 100 divided by 100, the remainder is zero. And here, 200 divided by 100, the remainder is zero. Same thing for the value of 300 and the value of 400. Okay, so for your assignment for our next video session, what I want you to do is write a field calculator script that would return a value of zero for this major contour field if the contour is not in increments of 100. So for example, in this simple example, 50 divided by 100, we want that to be a zero. 150 divided by 100, we want that to be a zero. And 100 divided by 100, we want to have a major contour value of 100. So do that and I'll go over the solution for this field calculator in Python in our next video session.